So, uh, if you remember, when the first 20 lakh crore package was announced, and that was in the depths of the crisis, COVID crisis, a lot of the focus and critique about the package which was announced was basically, what is the incremental fiscal spend from the government going to be? And, I mean, you know, it was obviously very, very small. Uh, but uh, since then, a lot has changed. I mean, actually, the world has changed. Uh, and, uh, you know, the story here in India has been the unexpected huge recovery we've seen and the resilience of the consumer, the Indian consumer, and companies as well. I mean, if second quarter numbers from Indian companies are any evidence, uh, you know, India Inc. has sailed through this crisis, at least for now, it looks like, in a pretty good way. Uh, and this despite, uh, you know, what many economists will say, very little actual extra spending help from the government of India. Uh, the, 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 you know, through the course of the months as we were waiting for the next set of stimulus measures, uh, the, uh, uh, the focus was, Near-term demand boost, near-term demand revival. I mean, one big concern for uh, corporates has been that post-Diwali, will the uptick in demand sustain once this uh, pent-up uh, uh, sort of demand fizzles out, right? So will the government time its measures in helping near-term demand so that the, dem the consumer story stays intact? I just, I'm just sort of putting together a couple of views here from some of the top uh, sort of uh, uh, stock market strategists who also look at the economy, uh, and uh, I'm just focusing on one particular aspect, which is what is the incremental extra spending from the government from the uh, measures which were announced yesterday. Let's start with Samir and Chakrabarti of City. Uh, and this is what he says. He's, I mean, you know, lo uh, the, uh, uh, long and short of it, he says the, the measures which have been announced are less than 0.5% of GDP. Uh, he says government focus, and I quote, continues to remain on long-term measures that could revive the virtuous consumption investment cycle. However, from a near-term perspective, additional fiscal cost in F521 from these measures is likely, be to, likely to be less than 0.5% of GDP. Let's move on. Mahesh Nandurkar of G Jeffrey says, government policy steps are largely, a real, are largely a realignment of fiscal expenditure in line with key priorities, which appear to be employment generation, rural economy support, and infrastructure build-up. Much of it could be reallocation of expenditure from savings elsewhere. So, I mean, he's calling this reallocation and not a stimulus. Uh, okay, let's move on to the third one. This is G.D. Giri of IAFL. He sort of combines wh what the government has done so far, and he sort of says this, and I quote, the government stimulus 3.0 has measures for infrastructure and real estate sectors amounting to 0.3% of GDP. Cumulative stimulus from April is 3.9% of GDP, which includes 1.8% of guarantee. So, the total stimulus, excluding the government guarantees, from April uh, stands at 2.1% of GDP. So, I mean, you know, just a bunch of points here. But many would push back to this and say, well, you know, uh, even as government spending has been falling, the recovery has actually been quite remarkable. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe uh, the government has timed this right and this recovery will continue. Uh, some will even go to the extent of saying that because this, gov because this recovery is not predicated on extra government spending, this may be more durable. But I think we've got some experts joining us on the phone line to take this conversation forward. Kaushik Das is uh, economist at Deutsche Bank. We have Aditi Nair of Ikra also joining in to uh, run us through what they make of it. Uh, thanks very much, Kaushik and uh, Aditi, for joining us here. Kaushik, let me ask you that question. Do you think the recovery, in a way, because it's more organic and not uh, sort of depending, dependent on government stimulus, extra spending from the government, uh, is more d durable? I mean, it's a very broad, top-down way of looking at it, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, so, uh, so the thing is, uh, even before the stimulus was announced, if you look at the backdated data, for example, even the IIP data which came out for September, uh, we have seen a, a kind of, you know, good uptick in growth and more than what maybe, you know, consensus was expecting. Uh, if you remember, I told you in your previous show that, you know, you would continue to get, get uh, you know, growth uh, upside surprises to growth compared to what people are forecasting at this stage. And that has been continuing with IIP turning positive in September and in October, you'd see a further, you know, move in the positive territory, both for core infrastructure production and uh, IIP. Uh, if you've seen uh, the uh, manufacturing and services PMI have both.
kind of shot up in October. Uh, now, your question is whether it will sustain beyond October, November. Our guess is that uh, you would see a sequential momentum of increase. Some bit of pent-up demand obviously has pushed up growth a little more than what people had thought. But uh, I would think that this growth trajectory will continue to move higher and higher. And October, December, we have a minus 1.5% contraction when you know uh, the consensus is... Uh, much more negative at minus 3.2%. Now, I guess they would be revising their growth as, as we move forward with this data. Uh, but when we go to January, March of next year, we think uh, we are in for a 2.5%, 3% uh, positive growth on real GDP. And April, June, obviously, we'll get a big number, positive number, because April, June of this year uh, has been negative. So on a base effect, uh, we would get close to 15 to 20% increase. So I don't think we'll have a problem maintaining this, uh, you know, momentum. And uh, these measures that have been announced yesterday, you have to see that in totality of the other measures that have been announced before as well. So if you take all the efforts together on the spending of the government, it is about 2% of GDP. And that is maximum space, in my view, that the government has at this stage, uh, without damaging the fiscal deficit too much. And even in this scenario, the fiscal deficit is expected to go up to 8% of GDP for the center and about 4.5-5% for the states. So we are talking about 12.5-13% uh, fiscal deficit as a percentage of GDP for India. So this is the maximum space that India had. And don't forget that on 1st February, we'll have the budget for the next fiscal year. So we could expect uh, more announcement in February as well. So the government has not said that this is the last round. So I think it is okay for the timing, given that we have seen the recovery in growth. And February, we should be expecting more announcement from the government, and that should help the growth momentum to sustain in the medium term. Right. Uh, Aditi, come in. Uh, would you say that uh, this, uh, this, you know, the government stimulus which has been announced is actually expended reallocation and not a fresh stimulus? And therefore, according to you, purely, what kind of a growth impulse can these measures have? Hi, Seema. So I would uh, tend to agree that there's a lot of reallocation of expenditure that we're seeing this year. If we look at the growth numbers that we've got for government India's expenditure for Q2, actually there's been a contraction in both the revenue expenditure as well as in the capital expenditure after a very good showing in the first quarter. So in the first quarter GDP numbers as well, we did see that government uh, expenditure rose at a very high pace and that is what, uh, you know, really did hold up the overall uh, GDP uh, numbers to a large extent as the rest of the economy was faltering. Now in Q2, what has happened in our view is that uh, the industrial sector has suddenly revived, especially in September. And some parts of the services sector are also starting to show a good amount of uptake. We expect this uh, momentum to continue through the festive season. And then after that, we'll have to see whether the um, pent-up demand going away, what kind of an impact that really has on the more steady growth numbers from December onwards. Now, at the same time, what we've seen is this contraction in government spending that I was just talking about from government of India's side in Q2. And uh, clearly, why the government is trying uh, to make a series of announcements of targeted expenditure to revive certain sectors. There's also a lot of expenditure savings that they seem to consciously be looking for to be able to fund that expenditure given the kind of money shortfall that is in all levels of government this year. So I do think this is more in terms of a realignment. While the total uh, actual fiscal cost of all of the stimulus measures is around 2% uh, of uh, GDP, this is not going to be fresh expenditure above the budgeted level. A lot of it is going to get absorbed within the outlay that was originally there within the budget itself. So the current impulse is, it's, uh, it, you know, it's quite nuanced question. The targeted sectors will see a boost from these measures. So overall, it's not as if the pure additional fiscal stimulus uh, that we should be counting it in terms of looking at those projectives.
Hmm. And Aditi, uh, what did you make of uh, the inflation number which came out yesterday? Uh, you know, when the new MPC was constituted, we got a sense that, you know, the new MPC is a bit dovish. In fact, the commentary itself suggested that there is space for more rate cuts. Uh, but now when you're seeing the stubborn inflation print of 7.6% in the month gone by, do you think in the upcoming December RBI policy there is room for a rate cut? And would it change your overall stance of how many rate cuts from here on? So the inflation number that we got yesterday is in line with our expectation of 7.6%, and we got an increase in food inflation as well as in the core inflation. The food inflation component has been very stubborn, but we do uh, hope that the Kharif hours, fresh arrivals, and the base effect tends to start turning around from uh, this month onwards. But with the kind of economic revival that is already underway, it's now difficult to assume that there is going to be a very meaningful uh, downturn as far as the core inflation is concerned. We expect it to remain sticky for a couple of months before starting to trend down only because of the base effect. So overall, the trajectory of inflation is not out isn't looking particularly complicated. We think of it as ruled out and the chances of a February also medium. But we do think that there is space for one more date cut, uh, possibly uh, because the commentary from the EFC does uh, suggest that they are, they do want to be able to uh, institute another rate card as soon as possible, as soon as the inflation out there. The question is really how soon uh, the inflation numbers will be at a level that's comfortable enough to be able to trigger another rate card. Right. Aditi, unfortunately, we've got you on a bit of a scratchy line, so we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much uh, for joining in. That's the word from Kaushik Das as well as Aditi Nair. From that, on that note, we'll slip into a very short break on the other side.